BBC Radio 1. Ed Sheeran, welcome to Radio 1's Big Weekend. Thanks for having me. How does it feel to be back? It's been a while. It's been a, it's been a very, very long time. Uh, it feels good. It feels good. I mean, my first single was meant to be ready for now, um, and I was meant to be playing it at One Big Weekend, so it does feel a bit weird playing some, you know, starting with Castle on the Hill instead of, like, the new tune, but... It's it's great. Yeah, I'm using a band for the first time, and uh, yeah, it, it feels like the next stage. Tell us where we are, because I reckon a lot of Radio 1 listeners have probably never heard of this place, and it's fantastic, isn't it? This is Snape Maltings. It is in Suffolk, and uh, Radio 1 contacted me for one big weekend and said, uh, choose somewhere in Suffolk that you'd like to play, and I gave them Snape Maltings and also my old school hall yeah but i don't think the cameras would have fit in the old school that's where i did my very very first gig but um but yeah it's a be- beautiful setting um there's like henry moore and barbara hepworth sculptures in the um in the fields outside i mean it's a beautiful beautiful place are they expensive yeah i think one of them got stolen and melted down I'm, i may be wrong but i i think one of them one of the really expensive ones got stolen and melted down into scrap metal have you played here before? Have you been here before? I've never played here before. My brother has played here in school concerts. They do like a special school concert like once every few years here from our, from our school. Um, but yeah, I, got, I, I was meant to, before COVID happened, my old school were, were doing a something, some, some sort of concert that I was going to come here and do as well. But um, other than that, no, I haven't. Before we talk about your set, tell us what you've been doing over the past couple of years because it's been pretty quiet. We haven't really heard from you. Uh, well, I've been making... A lot of songs, a lot of songs. I've been keeping busy doing that. Um, I uh, became a dad, which yep. is... Um, Congratulations. Thank you. A, a seismic change in, <laughs> in, in my life. And um, what else? been painting and... Yeah, just keeping... A, uh, it's the first time I've been, like, really healthy. Like, I've, like, I've kind of stopped all the bad habit stuff in my life but you know started exercising every day and uh not i was talking about takeaways earlier but not i was eating like a takeaway every single day and now i don't eat a takeaway every single day and it's been um yeah it's good when i seen you before and i was like you do look trimmer thank you, you. Look- yeah i've yeah. uh yeah it happened kind of uh pretty much as soon as tour ended it just happened and because it, i wasn't having chicken wings and two bottles of wine a night you know? <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll. Uh, so this is the first time. Am I right in saying we're going to see you with a band? This is yeah. I've done band stuff before, but I, only at the kind of request of TV shows. So when I did Saturday Night Live, they were like, "We'd like to see him with a band." So I got a band for that, and there've been like a couple of things. I think I've done late l- late with Jules with a band and stuff like that. But I sort of felt, you know, I've done the loop pedal thing now for. 15 years, 10 years, like professionally. And the last tour that I did was, you, you know, the, the most people are going to a tour of any tour went to that tour. So I'm kind of like, I've done that. I've done, I've done the loop pedal show. I need to do something different. So um, I uh, put this band together and we've been rehearsing it and just kind of trying it out. And what I like about it is the, I've, what I felt were the weakest bits of the tour were some of the songs that she needed a band like yeah. Castle on the Hill and, and th- thinking out loud. And the best bits of the tour were the ones that needed the pedal like Shape of You and, and Bloodstream. And what I found is great about it is now the set feels very on a level with each other. There's no like this actually song sounds worse than this one because they're all different. And yeah, it's a, it's kind of a learning experience for me. And does it does that take quite a lot of getting used to doing with a band? Because it must be... Yeah, I, I and I feel and I feel like we'll we'll all loosen up a little bit more. I mean, they're like this is, you know, I, I, Mark, um, the drummer, and uh, John, the bassist, have actually played with me since 2011. I think I did a live lounge with them, um, but uh, you know, uh, all the other. I mean, I've I've met all the other guys along the way, um, but this is the first time we've all played together. So it is, it, you know, it started off as quite nervous and stiff from all of us, and it's relaxing a bit more now. So. What can fans expect to see today from your set? I think, you know, I'm doing two new songs um, that I've never played live. Um, one of which is Afterglow that um, I released at Christmas. Um, and, oh, actually, I lie. I have played one of them live. I played one at a, uh, at a funeral. Um, oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then the... Um, what else? Yeah. I mean, like, songs like Castle on the Hill with a full band, the way it's meant to be. So, um, yeah, it's good. That's great to know. And um, does I know it's an obvious question, but are you missing the live audiences? 
I am missing the live audience. Yeah, I am. I think. I think. I think every performer on the planet, and not just performer, every performer's team on the planet is missing the buzz of gigs, and it does feel like things are stepping in the right direction to get them back. I know the Brits, you know, did their thing with everyone in the O2, so hopefully that's a good step forward. I think. You mentioned before you played a couple of new songs. Does that mean? We can expect a new album soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The new album is is coming. I was meant, mate. I was meant to play the new the new single today, but the vi- the video is not. The video is good. The video is really good, and it has a lot of pre production needs right. to be done on it um, to make myself look beautiful. Obviously. Do you have pretty much total freedom on the videos and the creative process on that? Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't actually think. You know, I think it's all. I think nowadays it's a, like a. It's a myth that artists don't have creative freedom. It's a myth to be like. I think that was like very. I mean, maybe even a ten year ago thing, but definitely like, eighties, nineties, blah blah blah. But I think nowadays because of Spotify, and ev- everything is so instant that you know new artists are coming through, with de- being developed by themselves, and they can kind of put out what they want and. It thinks. I mean, I think there's definitely, even for me, there's a process of sending stuff to people and being like, is this good? And what do you think of this? Like I have my manager and the people that work at my record label, but like if genuinely I wanted to do something, I could do it. And I think that is the case with every artist, but I think that they, it's good to take advice from people. So when you say you're not allowed, there's loads of things that I'm technically allowed to do, but probably shouldn't do. Okay. You know? What can we expect from the new album? Will it be completely different? What we all love about Ed Sheeran? Can you say too much? Um, it's kind of like an amalgamation of all the records. And it uh, the first single is really different. Like really, really different. And um, I think that that's always... I Every time I've released a first single from an album, apart from Plus, because it was 18, and, you know, it was like... I kind of, that was already often, often rolling. But every time I released a first thing from an album, I've been nervous about it because I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. And I like that feeling. I like, yeah. it's like, I could just release a Thinking Out Loud or a Castle Nail or something like that is safe. But I, for me, I, I like the idea of putting something else and being, being like, I don't know how people are going to feel about this. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're looking forward to that now. Yeah. Um, you're going to get asked this in every interview from now on. Ipswich Town. Ipswich Town, yeah. You are sponsoring their... Is it the whole Mandaway strip? Yeah, yeah. It's the, the new but, season. you know, I actually, it, it all kicked off. I started sponsoring Framlingham Town Under 11 Girls team. Uh, and I got their, their kit. I got emailed and they were like, can you get our kit? So I got, got the kit. And then I was like, I wonder if, like... I wonder how, how it is to sponsor, like, Ipswich. Because Ipswich's sponsor were up that season. They were Magical Vegas, and then Magical Vegas gave it to Carers Trust for a bit. Um, And I just inquired, and I was like, do you guys need a sponsor? And they were like, yeah, for sure. So uh, it's uh, it's been a cool process. So you called them, they didn't call you? Yeah, I called them... Oh, man, it must have been... It must have been around the end of the Divide tour, because we'd done the shirts with them. Uh, for the last Divide gig in Ipswich, I did an Ipswich Town kit with Divide on. And it mu- must have been then I asked. I mean, it's been a long process. It's been a long, long process of, like, um, getting things in, in order. But it's been, uh, it's been, I mean, the reaction's been great. I think, I think the uh, positive reaction stems from the negative reaction of the uh, European Super League. I yeah. think that it's, uh, it's like a polar opposite of, like, really 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 rich people that own team uh and kind of monetize the team and then just like people who love a team and want to see a team do well i think i think that's why people are so into it but i really may i mean ipswich they have new owners uh and i think a good attitude they've got a great new manager and i feel like next season we could be promoted we'll see and i was trying to say to a friend who's not a football fan i was trying to explain the they super leaked him and he just couldn't get it. It's, it just it just wasn't football, wasn't it? It wasn't what we all love and yeah. Know I think about I mean we t- I mean it's got the cut. The, it's been covered by 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 everyone, but yeah, it's definitely not. Uh, it's not needed, is no. it? No one's going. This is this is this is what we need. Okay. Yeah. Um, now that you sponsor Ipswich, do you get any special treatment from? Do you get a box now? Have you got a lifetime? I do. I do get a box, but I have actually uh, pushed the box. To after the tour because I've got a tour I haven't can't haven't announced the tour yet but the tour goes on for a while and I was like 
I'm just going to have a box and not be able to see any gigs. So I've actually pushed the box to have after the tour. So yes, I do. I do get a box. I get a uh, a player. Um, you know the track seats with your initials on. Get away. Get one of them. Yeah. So um, you got. And then yes I think the I think I get like. I saw the contract and it's like you get given like a load of shirt because I think it's usually companies that do it. So mm. they get have shirts for all their companies, signed footballs if you want signed footballs. Uh, yeah, there's like all stuff like that. I don't think I'm going to like take them up on like everything, but definitely like the player tracksuit. I want to get, I've got like three schoolmates that are mad Ipswich Town fans. I want to get them in the tracksuits. We're talk, talking about doing away days in them. That's just get, going to like Fleetwood and <laughs> rocking up. <laughs> Uh, do you do away days with Burnley? Oh, go everywhere with him. There's only one ground I've not been to in London, and that's um, Fulham. Craven Cottage? Yeah, it's the only Lovely one. Lovely ground. Not, yeah, and I didn't realise, because obviously everybody's list, missing live music and everything like that, I didn't realise how much I missed the day itself. So for me, it's going on the game, getting the train up from London, yeah. meeting my dad and my uncles and my cousins in the pub, arguing afterwards if we've got beat, because everyone's got an opinion. And it's that, it's, it's a good, game. You know, it's a good day. It's a good day. I mean, I've been to... Uh, it, whenever I was off tour, really, I would go to, to Ipswich Games, and, you know, they've, they're, they've had some tough years recently, and they wouldn't really always win. But the day out would be... Yeah, really fun. I mean, win or win or lose. I mean, it would obviously put a dampener on it if if they lost. But you still went to the game with, you know, I'd go with my dad a lot, or I had a, a Japanese rock band come and uh, work in my studio, and uh, I brought them to the game, and Ipswich were like on form, <laughs> and so now that that uh, the Japanese band are all mad Ipswich fans now. Brilliant, b- bang into it. Ed, thanks so much for speaking to us today. But most of all, importantly, thanks so much for performing for Radio One's big. Yeah, weekend. thanks for having me. This has been great. I feel like we talk for football. Yeah, that's the best way.